season two of Kicking It with Karen Beyond Sauerkraut. It's a new school year, so it's a new season, and we have so much in store for you. We're going to start off with a bang. Today, we're going to make fermented salsa. For this recipe, you will need four vine ripened tomatoes, a handful of cilantro, two teaspoons of some form of starter. Today we're going to use orange beet kvass. You'll need three jalapeno peppers, one teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of chili powder, a half teaspoon of cumin, two cloves of garlic, about ah, the juice of half a lemon, ours is frozen, a quarter of a medium sized red onion. So first things first, we're going to work with the tomatoes. We're going to take them off the vine and we're going to give them a little chop. So these simply aren't going to stay like this. We are going to blend them up and make more of a puree and keep the other vegetables more chunky. So we're going to put these off to the side and then we will chop our other vegetables and blend these up. Don't be afraid of a little wilted jalapeno. They'll still be really good, probably even have a stronger, more rich flavor. I am going to seed them though so we don't get all the heat. And a fresher one. Time to seed them. Kill two birds with one stone. Now cilantro is optional because some people think that cilantro tastes like soap. If you like cilantro, just use a handful. If you don't like cilantro, don't use it. Good enough. Good. All right, time to blend up the tomatoes. Excellent. Just chunky enough. Perfect. Okay, let's put the two parts together and then add the seasoning. the cumin and the chili powder, and we're gonna chop up two cloves of garlic, my favorite part. <laughs> the 
There we go. Okay, we're gonna add in our lime juice. our salt and our starter. Remember, we're using orange beet kvass. That'll get that fermenting and just deepen the flavor. Let's jar this up. Here we go. All right, we're gonna put an airlock on it. That way it'll prevent any oxygen from getting in. And there we have it. Well, here it is, fermented salsa. It'll sit on the shelf for three to four days and I should start to see some bubbling coming up. The one thing I want to make sure I do because I don't have anything weighing it down is to make sure I stir it every day so that any bacteria that might get in there gets disturbed and doesn't have an opportunity to grow. So I did set aside some for me to taste and you know if it tastes good before it's fermented in its fermented state it's going to be delicious. So let's see what this tastes like. Ooh. It's got a really nice heat to it, not too hot. And the tomato flavor is slightly sweet. And the lime just elevates everything. This is really good. I really hope you guys get an opportunity to try this. And if you decide not to ferment it, don't. It's good on its own. But just know that the depth of flavor grows with everything that you ferment. Cheers. I really hope you enjoyed what you saw. And if you did, please... You thought it was the end of the video, didn't you? Hello. It's four days later and we have fermented salsa. You can smell it. It smells so good. I can smell that garlic, the, the onion, the cilantro, the tomatoes still have a tart smell. So let's open this up and then we need to shake it up because it's separated. That's how you know it's fermented. That's how you know it's fermented. That's how you know it's fermented. because it's separated. Oh. <sighs> I don't know if you can see that. Okay. So I have another lid, I'm gonna shake it up. Oh, I'm gonna do that again and see if you can hear it. Did you hear that? Okay. Oh, it's a little thin, but I think it's still gonna be good. So.
everything that it was when we made it is even better. The depth of flavor is so tremendously different. Mmm, mmm, mmm. This is delicious. I might eat all of it. I really hope you enjoyed what you saw, and if you did, please remember to like and subscribe and comment, and don't forget to ring that bell so you know when I'm coming back in your kitchen.